So a new year is up. 2019 is almost done and what a year it has been. A crazy year. It was the first year where I have co-hosted some workshops which I have set up myself along with Nigel Danson, Nick Page and Tor Ivarnes. And they went just amazing. And thank you so much to all the participants on those workshops. Also a huge thank you to all the participants on the workshops that I run through Iceland Photo Tours where I've co-hosted the workshops with uh, Oli Haukur and Brynja Augustsson. And there are links to all of these guys around here somewhere, wherever there's space for it. And be sure to check those out. They're amazing photographers, all of them. And of course, you know some of them from YouTube already. Along with the tutorial I released in the spring, I've also released three maps and my ebook. And I want to say a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you who have bought my products like it has just been overwhelming how well that has been going on or doing and especially my ebook has just sold so much more than I could ever have hoped for so really thank you thank you thank you so much so what's to come in 2020? Of course, more workshops. And if you're interested in workshops, be sure to sign up to my newsletter. That is where I announce them through. Besides the workshops, I also have some travels planned just for myself in 2020. And one tour in particular I'm looking very much forward to is in May, two weeks in Western US with a couple of friends, Kai Hornung and Mikkel Beider. They have been featured in some of my older videos, you might remember them. And Sophie and I also plan to do some kind of Euro trip during summer. We're not exactly where uh, we are going, but uh, I have a lot of places I want to see and, and photograph. So besides those two travels, I'm also looking very much forward to do more local landscape photography here in Denmark. So. Yeah, I have some plans with that, but more about that later. On to the main point of this video, and that is to go through all my favorite photos from 2019. And these are my favorite photos. They are not necessarily my most popular photos. And I will explain why they are my favorites as, as I go through them. I will discuss my thoughts with them and composition and so forth. We've done this before, so you know what you're in for. I've just put them up in chronological order and just like the two other years, I have not necessarily taken the photo in 2019, but I released it in 2019. All right, so the first photo here is from Sanoi. And this is just one of those photos where I pre-visualized what it is I, I wanted. And then I went there, I got the conditions I wanted and just executed on my vision. There weren't a lot of photos from this place when I researched it, so I wasn't entirely sure if I could actually get this perspective. And luckily I could, because I wanted to show this sea stack here in the background. I actually wasn't aware about this sea stack over here on the left, but luckily I could find an angle where I could include both sea stacks and then have Thomas down here in the foreground. So it's one of my favorite photos because I was able to execute a vision that I prepared from home. I got optimal conditions and yeah, everything just came together in a, a really good way where I could show how big and epic this place just is. I don't think there's any surprise when I show you that this is one of my favorite photos from 2019 also. I absolutely love this vantage point of the huge waterfall fossa in the Faroe Islands. And this was a day where Thomas and I probably wanted to stay home. But I was like, no, let's go out and see if we can find something. And we just had the, this huge storm uh, hammering in from the south. And as usual, when there's crazy weather, there's a good chance of getting some crazy photographs. And this is just one of them. So we have all these horizontal lines that go through the photo with the sea spray down here and the next line. Then we, of course, have the line between the water and the mountains on the other side here. And then we have the road and more of the lines through the mountains here. And then we have 
like just all the water which in itself like there's a huge amount of water in the waterfall these days and then when you when you have a storm that basically just pushes the water back up the mountain it just looks yeah incredible and this was a very hard photo to take i think i shot like 300 photos just to be sure that i had something which were sharp and i had to go all the way to iso 1600 to be sure i got a photo that wasn't shaken so there is a little bit of noise and a lot of the time i spent editing this photo was actually about controlling the noise in the photo so there is of course still some noise left but not as much as there could have been but yeah in the end just a absolutely crazy photo and, and an obvious favorite photo of mine for 2019. So yet again this probably doesn't come as a big surprise for those who follow me on this channel regularly that this is one of my favorite photos from 2019. I've been doing more landscape photography in Denmark in 2019 than I've done the previous three years and this photo here is among other the reasons why I have done so much more landscape photography because in my humble opinion this is a world-class photo. It doesn't matter where in the world you would take it no matter if it was Denmark or Iceland and so forth. It is kind of like location independent. This would still be an amazing photo and if I can make amazing photos in Denmark, there's really no excuse not to do it. So yeah, I, I, I had a vision more or less uh, for this photo and I more or less got that vision. I battled a lot with the snow to make sure that I got a sharp photo. And uh, yeah, in, in the end it turned out just really, really well. So one of the photos I've wanted from Iceland basically ever since I, I went there for the first time was a sunset shot from Rainy Stranga and I finally got one with the sun behind these iconic sea stacks. Even more so I also got it while I had some clouds in the top of the sky. So the sun just peeked out for a brief moment before it went down below the horizon. So again just a shot where everything came together in, in a vision that is just exactly what I wanted. This is this is nature porn 101, but it just works so, so well, in my humble opinion. So this photo is inspired by an Icelandic painter called Geo Gudni. And it's funny how all the Icelanders I've shown this photo to can recognize the style. So I have been able to emulate uh, his paintings a, a little bit with this photo here. And it is actually taken from more or less the same beach as the previous photo. The sea stacks is out of the frame, out to the right. And this is just like straight on to the ocean and just playing around with the shutter speed just below one second, just trying to find the perfect moment before the waves break with a, with a good repetition between the waves. And on top of that, having the horizon almost not visible, just makes for this eternal calm little bit ominous and bleak photo but but still one that instills some questions and it's one of those photos that is hard to put into words but uh, yeah definitely a favorite photo of mine this year and this photo from Stocksness also in Iceland is just yeah so bleak and calm and a little bit like again ominous and depressing and I, I, I do tend to lean towards that I like those kind of, of photos and with the low hanging clouds and just these lone mountains popping out and the reflection in the water super simple but there's just so much atmosphere in it and I, I really really like that sometimes photos should just be fun to make and this is like nature porn 101 like we have rainbow and waterfall and long exposed water with a great depth and a fairly simple composition and there's not really much to it it's a combination of two photos one for the background a fast shutter to get the, all the different details and texture in the waterfall and then a photo with a slower shutter speed to get some streaks in the water in the foreground and this is a little bit of a hard photo to make because there's quite a lot of spray in the air at this location so you have to wipe and shoot wipe and shoot very rewarding and it's again it's it's fun to make and i i really like how it turned out 
So we are jumping from winter in Iceland to summer in the Canary Islands. And this shot here is from Gran Canaria, where me and Sophie spent a week. And I really just wanted to go somewhere new, a place I have never been before. So I researched a little bit. There was a cheap flight ticket, so we got a chance to go there. And I researched a little bit. And there is quite a lot of opportunities to photograph in Gran Canaria. And this photo here is by far my favorite of all the photos I got down there so it's actually the top of Tenerife you can see here in the background and then we have the sun setting obviously throwing its beams into this valley here in front and I found this ridge where I had a couple of trees framing the scene and then the bottom here also framing the scene and of course Sophie in the scene just to add interest and scale and the human element and I also just love the colors here everything from yellow onto blues and reds and pinks and purples and some cyan down here and yeah just a, a photo I really really treasure. And of course, on top of all the technical stuff, the reason why I really treasure this photo is also because it's just great memories from a great tour we had down there on, on, on our photography vacation, which is kind of a long time since we've had that last time. And so back to the Faroe Islands, this iconic place, I finally got an evening there with some really, really great light. And we also got some red clouds at a later moment, but I definitely prefer this one here with the strong sun just caressing the mountain here and the atmosphere from the, the clouds just not covering, but just as a feather just moves across the top of the mountain here. You can still see the top. Uh, and, and then of course the waterfall, more or less calm water. And then the composition with the foreground here to create some depth that leads into the photo and into this frame here. So yeah, again, um, very popular uh, wide angle photo, but when everything just comes together, it's just so, so satisfying. So this one shot here is definitely also one of my favorites. This is from a location I hadn't gone to before in the Faroe Islands. And I actually kind of found it myself by basically just like exploring. We have a strong foreground with the repetition of the waterfalls here in the front leading up into the mountain in the background. But what really, in my opinion, makes this photo or image stand out is how the clouds here are kind of like formed as a dragon that lays around here the top of the mountain. Now obviously this effect is due to some editing and as everybody know I am unapologetic when it comes to editing and if I want it to look like a dragon I will try to make it look like a dragon and that's just how it is. So the colors and the composition and this a little bit like again ominous scene with the shape of the dragon around the mountain just yeah it, it makes for some fantasy adventure ish theme around this photo and i i really really like that so this photo here is also just like one of my absolute favorites it's super simple composition everything of interest happens more or less in here i have some separation between me standing here as the model and and the background here to balance out everything on the left and then we of course have like the signature of this photo with the very strong light coming through the arch also a, a color palette which isn't like in your face it's not like we have big epic red clouds in the sky just super simple muted yellows and greens here in the foreground which which just makes for color theory wise a more calm photo than if you just had colors all over the place. So this photo here is of course also one of my favorite photos from 2019 uh, for obvious reasons. This is like the first time I really went out into a forest in Denmark and got away with a shot I'm really, really satisfied with. Compositionally, it's obvious that it, it kind of looks as if these big beech trees here stand in a circle around the smaller beech tree, which is course the star of the photo because it's lit backlit by the the sun coming in through the canopy up here in the top and it's a photo where I kind of foresaw that the light would move over and hit the small tree so I just waited it out and just got it all in in one frame when when the time was right besides the positive feelings of being like the first woodland photo of mine 
it's also just nice and summerish and reminds me of warmth, the warmth of summer and I, I really like that, especially because I get quite a lot of my photos in winter time and as you've already seen many of my photos are quite dark and uh, almost depressing. So this photo is of course also one of my absolute favorite photos of 2019 and one I've already printed and hung here on my wall next to me. And it is just, there's just so much atmosphere in this one. And this is taken just a couple of kilometers from where I used to live when I did my teacher's degree. It is from my hometown in, in Silkeborg. So I have a lot of feelings attached to this. Like this is how it looks back home. And this is just such a regular landscape, but in in, in a kind of like world class type of weather with this fog here and yeah <laughs> it's hard to put into words why it's actually something I treasure but I just feel calm looking at it and and proud of it and yeah yeah so if I could only choose one photo to say which were my favorite photo of 2019 it would most likely be this one here. It's from an oak tree forest fairly close to where I live and it is one I got to scout first and then I went back there when the conditions were more optimal. I really love this almost abstract twirl of the tree which just invokes so many questions and feelings about like fantasy stories and elves and fairies and as a fairly simple photo and, and a fairly real photo, but still one with a lot of like fantasy elements in it. I've also printed this photo and hung it on, on my wall and you really just want to go into the photo and, and sit on this branch here and just take in the feeling of this forest here. All this atmosphere, I just really, really love it. From a technical perspective, it's fairly simple. I do like the depth of it because of the separation the fog creates. Uh, I don't have any like sky in the background. You can still see that there are some, some trees here in the background. So it's just everything is just forest in this photo here. And you have the branches branches out into different directions with a, with a good balance in the photo. So yeah, this is probably my favorite photo of 2019. The last photo I want to show is from my tour through the Icelandic highlands. And this mountain here in the background was by a landslide what I wanted to photograph the most. I had some really interesting conditions. It wasn't what I wanted, but I managed to use it to my advantage and have a lot of atmosphere in this photo here because we had quite a lot of dust storms. So even though it is dust and not rain or fog, it, it kind of had the same effect that everything close to you, you can see more clearly, whereas everything in the background will be more diffused and have less contrast. So you can see the mountain here, it pops out in the background, but you still have these glacier plains here and the glacier river leading into the scene. So you, so you kind of get like an S-curve starting from down here into the scene to the mountain and then up through the clouds. And on the same time, the, this line here through the clouds and this line here in the Glacier River uh, are parallel. So that is also very aesthetically pleasing to look at. And yeah, just very simple uh, and, and a more, again, cool down, not monochrome, but chromatic use of colors. So these were all my favorite photos of 2019. As, as you could probably hear, to me, it is way more important that I can enjoy the photos on their own merits and that I have some kind of emotional connection to them far more than getting the right light or right composition and so forth. Of course, those are also important, but it's, it's connecting with your own photos that is so, so important. I have of course taken way more photos in 2019 that I'm happy about and here comes a small compilation of the photos that almost made it to my favorite photos of 2019. <laughs>
So that was all for now. If you want to know more about composition, be sure to check out my ebook down in the description. I have both a light version you can check out first by signing up to my newsletter, or you can just go directly and get the full version. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment, and I wish you all a happy new year.